numerous awards for best employment law. A fierce advocate fighting for your legal needs. Welcome to Legal Views with your host, Attorney Sheila R. Stewart. Welcome, welcome to Legal Views with Attorney Sheila R. Stewart. You are in for a treat on today. We have with us Bishop Attorney Melvin J. Smith and Lady Jacqueline Denise Smith. And we are going to look at all of these issues that's impacting society today as it relates to the law, the church, and the family. You are tuned in to Legal Views. We are broadcasting, streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. We are located at 231 South Bemiston Avenue, Clayton, Missouri, Suite 800. The phone number here is 314-854-1339. And we are here to meet your legal needs. Now, we are excited again, as I stated, to have attorney Bishop Melvin J. Smith with us and his lovely wife. As you know, Ukraine has entered into a war with Russia. Ukraine hasn't done anything to invoke this war. This war was totally evoked by Putin. And also, as you know, we are in for a great uh, struggle with inflation. The gas prices are rising. And many people are feeling as if they're not making enough money to keep up with the rising inflation, the gas pumps, the grocery store. We're also in a uh, epidemic of drug addiction, with methamphetamines. So in other words, we're in a turbulent society. How do we deal with a turbulent society? How do we deal with all of the ongoing issues that keep occurring? COVID, wars, rumors of wars. There is no peace, so much anxiety and fear. And we're going to, um, we're going to look at these issues with some leaders that have advice and information to help you cope with any of these issues that you may be having. Bishop Melvin J. Smith is an attorney of over 30 plus years. He's also a pastor located here in the St. Louis metropolitan area of the Nazareth Temple Church of God in Christ. And he has served in many roles throughout the church, including the General Assembly. He has with him his lovely wife, Lady Jacqueline Denise Smith. She is an entrepreneur, prior school director, real estate agent and director, and just holds a host of many uh, credentials and experience in the workforce, work, excuse me, workforce, serving over 25 years in corporate America. Welcome, Attorney Smith. How are you doing today? And Lady Jacqueline Smith, how are you? Attorney Stewart, what a joy, what a delight, what a privilege it is to be with you once again. We're Amen. so honored that you have taken us, given us the opportunity to be with you once again on your uh, very outstanding program, Legal Views with Attorney Sheila R. Stewart. Thank you for this Amen. opportunity. Yes, thank you. And thank you for being with us. And we, are, we want to just give a, a quick shout out to... Uh, Mother Flora Cooper and uh, Attorney Bishop Timothy Smith, who was with us on last week and did a phenomenal job just unraveling the issues of Ukraine. Lady Smith, Jacqueline Smith, how are you this evening? I am well. How are you? I am doing great. I am doing great. Um, Can you, both of you, I want your thoughts on some of the issues as it relates to what's taking place. The Bible says, My people perish for a lack of knowledge, says we perish. And what could you share with our viewers to give them knowledge, to give them information, to assist them with being sustainable 
in today's turbulent society. Uh, knowledge as it relates to business, uh, knowledge as it relates to the church. Many people are losing their businesses and many churches have closed. What information would you share to assist individuals that are in a struggle today? You know, Attorney Stewart, Evangelist Stewart, uh, thank you for that question. You're right. We're, we live in a society that is troubled on every side. And sometimes you go to bed at night and you wake up in the morning and seem like things are going to pieces. The thing that keeps me focused and keep me stabilized in this unstable society is, number one, my faith and my trust and my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. You, you know, he, he is the one that keeps me centered. Uh, you know, I, I take the principles of the Bible that I minister from every day. Uh, those are just those are not words that just come out of my mouth. But in dealing with this troubling world, it's my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that keep me stable in an unstable society. Amen. And what would you Amen. say? What information would you add to that, uh, uh, Lady Smith? as it relates to this turbulent society that we are, you know, experiencing today. I agree with, uh, with Bishop Smith. Uh, my faith in God is what stabilized me uh, during this time to, to know that, uh, that my faith in God and that God is going is never going to leave me, forsake me, that he's going to be there with me uh, is what helps me uh, in this situation with what we're going through, uh, it's most unfortunate what's going on in, uh, in the world now, in particular with Ukraine. It's most unfortunate. Uh, but my faith right now is what was what strengthens me. When I think about what's going on in Ukraine, I think about uh, that we, we're, we're a spiritual, first of all. We're a spiritual group, right? Amen. And so I, I, I think that we, we should start with prayer. We want to pray for the people of, of Ukraine uh, and we want to uh, uh, and we want to do what we can as far as financial blessings. We want to uh, donate uh, uh, to those charitable organizations that can help the people in Ukraine. Uh, I work. Um, I work, I, I work in real estate and, and I'm affiliated with Coldwell Banker Gundaker. And we have a young lady that's from Ukraine. We have a young lady that's from Ukraine. And our meeting last week went from talking about uh, what's going on in the market to uh, almost a prayer uh, uh, session in the office. This young lady, while as we was having meeting, having a meeting, she was getting phone calls from the people back home asking you you you're at you're at work can you ask the people of america to protest to stand up to write letters so i understand uh what's going on and how hard how hard it is to sit and watch it but we as people of god we want to start with prayer amen we want to start with prayer we want to pray for the people of ukraine and uh, and it feels so close to me now that I have a colleague that's going through this. She's only been here five years now, about five years. And she's going through uh, this struggle with family members in Ukraine. So, uh, Saints, we want to pray for, the, for, for our uh, sisters and brothers in Ukraine. And then if we want to donate, and when we donate, we want to donate, donate to rep reputable organizations. To make sure charities and make sure that 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 your monies go to what uh, to organization that's going to be on boots on the ground. That's going to help those people as far as relocation. That's going to help those people as far as housing when they get to where they're going. That's going to help those folks with food and and just starting a new life. So we want to do that. And most of all, we want to educate ourselves on this subject. We do not want to be ignorant as to what's going on across the world. We see that it affects us because prices are starting to go up. Mm -hmm. So this turbulent time is 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 hitting home, and it's it's, it's going to hit home. We see that it's hitting home at the gas pumps. Amen. We see that 
uh, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of uh, entrepreneurs that that are gas station owners i've seen their doors shut so this was going on before but you know we're we're, we're in turbulent times now and we want to make sure that as a body as as a, uh members of the kingdom as men, members of the kingdom that we want to act accordingly uh during this time very good very good and i think um we all need to have uh, more of a understanding of the depths of how far reaching this issue is mm -hmm. and how it will ultimately impact young men, young women. If there is an outbreak of World War III, mm -hmm. furthermore, if nuclear weapons are used, mm -hmm. how far reaching that will um, problems that will occur that will, that will take place, excuse me, if nuclear weapons are used. And so we do have to be knowledgeable of what's taking place and we have to stay vigilant upon the information that we are receiving and to know how to That's use it. that information to provide uh, a plan of action for our lives. Now, for, now you all mentioned prayer, you all mentioned God, you all mentioned the kingdom. But what information would you give individuals that probably are not aligned with the church or not aligned with the kingdom, some business tips that they should know to improve their business status? What, if, what, what three business tips would you share, Attorney Smith, to help individuals that maybe they are not aligned with the church and don't believe or think the way we think mm -hmm. as it relates to business? Thank you for that, uh, Attorney Stewart. Uh, the Lord has blessed me, and I've been in business for myself, I think now somewhere around 25 or 26 years. Let, let, me, uh, let me digress for one second and tell you a funny joke about when I started my own business. It was about, oh, I would say about two months, no, maybe about six months before I got married. I went into the room where my then fiance was, and I kind of planted the idea that I wanted to leave my job and open my own business. Uh, and then after she agreed to be my wife, probably about 30 days after the wedding, I walked into the room and told her I quit my job. Wow. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know, that that's when I realized for real, for real, that she loved me. Yes. Amen. Uh, because I quit my job and I started my own law firm. If you're going to be successful in business, whether it's a law firm, whether it's a medical practice, whether it's a plumbing business, whether it's a construction business, I think perhaps the number one thing that you do need to put together is what I call a business plan. Yes. You need to put on paper how you plan to grow, sustain this business. So a business plan is of the utmost importance. Another thing that you have to look at when it comes to starting your own business or being successful in business is uh, marketing. It's yes. marketing. And marketing is just a fancy way of saying, how do I get the word out about my business? You know, when we first started our law firm, finances was challenging as it is with most startup businesses. So I just went to Kinko's, got a bunch of flyers made. I made a list of all of my friends, all of my relatives, all of my enemies. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. I did. I made, and I mailed everyone flyers. So marketing is vitally important. And then also another part of business is financing it. Yes. In other words, how are you going to pay uh, for the things that are needed uh, when it comes to your business? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm going to let Lady J take the financing aspect of it because she's, she's a graduate of Fontbonne University and she has a financial background in business as well. Well, with finances, you, you want to, you want to understand how you're going to, uh, how you're going to sustain this business, how you're going to uh, maintain this business, how you're going to get it up and running. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you going to take a bank loan? Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to use credit cards? You have people that 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 use credit cards. Are you going to use your savings? 
uh, there's grand opportunities out there. There's a bun abundance of grand opportunities where you want to just kind of go look into your field and see if there are uh, uh, people that are uh, willing to uh, assist you in, mm -hmm. in that in that field. So, uh, there's a uh, there's something that's called angel investment where you can uh where you where you have these people that just want to invest in your business and then you can of course you can borrow but these are all things that you want to have your business plan in place because if you have your business plan in place your marketing plan in place these are documents that you can take to these uh in entities and you can show them that you this is not something that you woke up and say well you I think I'm a, I could do well in this. I think I can do it. No, you have to let these people know that you have uh, 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 you have thought this process mm -hmm. out. You have uh, researched this product or this service that you want to get involved in. And once you present this to them, then you uh, hopefully would get uh, get the loan, or you would get the grant, or you would get the uh, the investor. But uh, starting a business is a wonderful thing but it's it's you have to do your research and uh, each part of that plan business plan has several uh steps inside of that the marketing plan has several steps inside of that and then you want to get the uh financing up and going and this is something with the finances this is the only going thing it just does not stop when you first start it's an ongoing uh thing that you do and if I can just add to that, I think another key into in being successful and starting a business or continue continuing a business, you have to know your stuff. That's now, it. in other words, if, if it's your dream to be an entrepreneur, let's just say you want to make uh, cars, you have to know everything there is about making a car. That's it. Now, sometimes when I'm in when I'm in uh, the legal mode and I'm taking a doctor's deposition, I never argue with doctors about medicine. They went to medical school. They know more about me. But when it comes to the law, I guarantee you, I know everything there is to know about the area where I practice. And if I don't know, I promise you, I'm going to research it, research it, research it until I know everything that there is to know. So if it's your desire to go into business in a certain area, knowledge, knowledge is power. Research it, talk to other people who have been successful at it, and then hang in there. Amen. Perseverance, success, write this one down, you all write this one down. <laughs> success is not an accident. Success is not a coincidence. But success comes to those that prepare and those that will persevere. In other words, you're going to stick with it. Amen. Every day in business. Listen, there are some times when I look at the bottom line of my business and it don't look as good as other days. Mm -hmm. But I don't throw in the towel. So hang in there, work hard and pray and the Lord will help you to be successful. Amen. Okay, so let's re let's um, summarize that for for individuals. You want to know your audience. Yes. You want to develop a marketing plan, and you want to identify resources such as grant opportunities. And you also would would want to know and understand that financing is a continuation. It's a continuous process mm -hmm. of identifying funds to keep your business afloat. And lastly, know your area of business. Be yes. effective in your area mm -hmm. of business. Study it, know it inside and out mm -hmm. so that you are competitive enough to stay in business for a period of time. Now, okay. what business tips would you share for a church leader? Okay. What business tip, tips would you share for a church leader? Because as you know, we have moved into a virtual society mm -hmm. now, which I pretty much like. I like the, the, the entire ideal of having the ability to reach thousands and thousands of individuals through something as simple as a platform as StreamYard or Zoom, Facebook, and all of the other 
uh, social media platforms. So what business tips would you share with a leader who is saying, I need to close my church doors because people mm -hmm. are not coming back to the church uh, post uh, COVID-19. They're not coming back mm -hmm. in. And how do I get those individuals back? What advice would you share? So let's kind of break that question up a little bit. First, when it comes to churches and ministry, the thing that I, I, I try to explain to pastors and church leaders is that there is a business and legal aspect to ministry. Mm -hmm. There is a business and legal aspect of ministry. Jesus said when he was in his earthly ministry, uh, remember the story where Mary and, jo Mary and Joseph had walked off and left Jesus at the temple mm -hmm. and they went back three days and found Jesus and said, we were worried. And Jesus' profound statement was, I must be about my father's business. Mm -hmm. Now, the business Jesus was talking about was winning souls and making disciples for the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But here's where I'm going. If we don't take care of the business and legal aspect of our churches and ministry, we're not going to be in business of winning souls. Mm -hmm. So I said all that to arrive at this point. The most common mistakes I see pastors and church leaders making is the failure to realize that this, that there is a and legal aspect of ministry. And when legal problems or business issues come to the forefront, we cannot simply bury our heads in the sand. In other words, what do you do when the IRS shows up? Uh -huh. Nobody wants to think about that. That's what do scary. you do? Unfortunately, <laughs> it, yeah, it, 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 it's one of those things. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, what do you do if you have a situation and in that situation, you realize that someone has slipped and fall on a church property? Mm -hmm. Attorney Stewart, I've met a whole lot of men and women that are good preachers, good, but they fail when it comes to the business legal aspect of church and of ministry. So that's why I'm saying the first thing that we have to do to be successful as pastors and in ministry is to realize is to realize that the church is the church is a business and we must be about the ministry of taking care of the Lord's business. Amen. But what would you tell them I'm taking care of the, of the Lord's business, but the money is not coming in. The plate is empty and the attendance is low and the level of participation is, is at an all time low. What advice would you give in a, in a situation like that? Well, number one, that's when you have to go back to your foundational principle. Number one. And, and I said it before, Perseverance is a key to success, whether you're in corporate America or if you're in the business of winning souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, you have to remember that you have a calling from Almighty God. That's it. And then number two, when it comes to church and ministry, you know, you have to be able to do what Jesus did. Listen, we're in a brand new normal when it comes to church and ministry and things of that nature. I was just talking to a colleague of mine that is also a bishop in the Church of God in Christ and pastor uh, of one of the greatest churches in this area. And we were just kidding each other. And uh, we, we kind of named, uh, I won't call the, indiv the individual name, but he named a member of his church, uh, Sister Zoom. Sister Zoom. Because <laughs> even though there's opportunities <laughs> to come physically, into the house of the Lord, many people are choosing to stay on the telephone church or on Zoom. I think we have to be straight up with the people of the Lord. I think we have to be straight up with the people of the Lord. We have to be able to call. We have to call them. We have to let them know that the Bible still teaches and tells us to forsake not the assembling of yourself. There is still value to what our corporate anointing that anointing when we physically come together and let the power of Almighty God rest and rule and abide with us. 
Then on the other hand, while you're trying to entice the people of the Lord to come back, if there are certain areas of your churches where you can cut expense, then do so. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have a building at Nazareth Temple that's 20,000 square feet. You know, I go through the building and make sure that the temperature is just minimum to make sure that the pipes do not freeze. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. You know, because the, if the building is not being used as much, then we have to do some situations such as cutting costs, you know, the supplies. For example, whereas we used to order X amount of supplies, since physically there are not as many people there on a regular basis, we've been able to cut back in that area also. So you can do those things. And then at the same time, and I'm going to yield to my wife. The other thing is increase increase the ability of your ministry to reach outside of the four walls of your church. You know, you can do it by way of social media, as I see it so often. You can do it by way of, uh, of television, or you can do it by way of uh, radio. So reach out to bring in new people that will worship with you and help you to bear the expense of ministry. And before you turn it over to, to Lady, before you turn it over to Lady Smith, I want to just add that I think one of the missing one, in my opinion, and I'm not a pastor, but you know, I listen to pastors and so forth. I think one of the key elements is being relevant. I don't think, I think people are many ministries are stuck in a in a traditional rut, and I mm -hmm. think that there there needs to be a relevance that goes beyond uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, activities and relevance. So, so what is relevance? Relevance is the ability to get outcomes and the ability to reach a diverse audience and manifest the uh, outcomes that the people need, manifest the opportunities that the people need. And I think when people come and come and come, and their needs aren't are not being met from a relevant point of view. I think that that is a uh, a pathway to individuals becoming detached from ministries. They love God, but they're detached because the ministries are not relevant. Uh, mm -hmm. Lady Jacqueline, I would like for you to respond to that. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Evangelist Stewart. And I was thinking uh, when Bishop was talking that. Uh, we have to have a presence online. You want to be relevant. You have to have a presence online. And, and that means that you have to uh, engage people in your uh, in your local church or maybe outside your local church that can help you. If you want to be relevant, you have to be out there. We are in a different time now. So uh, we're struggling to get uh, members back in the brick and mortar. You know, Nazareth Temple is blessed that our members are, uh, are we have a, a great number of members that are back in a brick and mortar, mm -hmm. but that's not the case for a lot of people. And I, and I, and I understand that. So your presence online is going to keep you relevant. And what you're talking about, you have to uh, uh, study and be uh, and understand what's going on in our environment now to be right, relevant online. And and um, and I and, and once you and when you're relevant online by having uh, hidden all the social media platforms, you know, uh, uh, digital media me, media is is uh, marketing has blown up these days, and that just entails everything the the, the all the uh, the Facebooks, the Twitter, uh, the YouTube, all that. So that's one way of being. Uh, relevant in the market that you need to be online. Also, um, you said something about finances, closing, uh, uh, people having to close up, they can't pay to keep their brick and mortar up. And that's been near and dear to my heart as well, because uh, our bishop has, uh, for the longest, had a ministry, we have a ministry called the St. Andrew's Ministry. So that's something even now, now that the uh, the mandates for masks and all that has kind of slowed down a little bit, died down a little bit, 
take that building, look at, go around and look at your building and look how you can uh, use that empty space to help you finance that building while you are getting used to this new normal. Uh, partnership with other organizations to bring social programs into your, uh, into your building. You know, those are things that you can do. Rent out your space, you know, your child care. There's all kinds of ways. You just have to, uh, you have to think about this in a different way. And uh, I don't think we're going back to just brick and mortar. So uh, the pastors and first ladies that are waiting on that, let me tell you, uh, it's not going to happen. Hmm. We need to uh, uh, embrace this social media online uh, uh uh, platform along with the brick and mortar. So those are just some ideas that I was thinking about as far as financing to help you up. And like I always say, look for those grants, look for those opportunities. But as far as being present, being relevant, you have you can't be relevant if you're not seen. Hmm. You know, another area that the church and the ministry and the body of Christ can be relevant is is in the is in the topics and the uh, subjects that we discuss from our pulpits and even in our small Bible group study. Amen. One of the areas that I'm troubled in is when it, in the area of drug addiction. You know, it's it's just so unfortunate to see that that has become such a problem in the community. You know, one, one, once upon a time when I preached a sermon, I asked a question, if you know someone if you've been addicted to drugs or if you know someone who has been addicted to drugs or rate or know a family member that has been addicted to drugs, raise your hand. Attorney Stewart, I would say about 85, if not 95 percent of the people under the sound of my voice on that Sunday morning indicated that there was somebody who had been addicted to drugs or alcohol mm -hmm. Uh, that they were personally involved with by way of a family relationship. So we as churches and those of us that are in ministry, I think we become relevant when we deal with topics such as dealing with drug addiction. And, and I think one of the keys, one of the keys is that we need to be transparent with people. Amen. The reality of the matter is that Many of us under the sound of my voice who saved, sanctified, baptized, filled with the precious, give up the Holy Ghost. You can tell I grew up coaching. Amen by that. Many people within our churches have been addicted to drugs, but let people know that the same God Amen. that delivered you can also give them the miracle to be free from that addiction. Amen. You know, so when we deal with topics that are relevant uh, to the people that listen to us, uh, drug addiction. You know, my wife was doing some research earlier on suicide, and I don't know if she wrote down the figures or the statistics, but the suicide, the rate of suicide in the African American society is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It is just unbelievable. So when we ask pastors and ministers of the gospel and evangelists, we start preaching about uh, suicide and we deal with drug yes. addiction. You know, one, one time, Sister Sheila, you may not remember this, but play like you did. Last year when I did a series on the silent killer mm -hmm. and everybody was waiting for me to say what the silent killer was. They thought it was bankruptcy. You, you all remember yes. that, that series, right? Nod your head now. I we're remember. in public. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but but the point that I made, the silent killer was depression. Mm -hmm. It was depression. And, and that, you know, even when it comes to mental challenges, you know, we as pastors and members of the body of Christ, we remain relevant when we deal with topics that are relevant to everyday people. Amen. And then as it relates to drug addiction, I will go a little further and say that there needs to be a structured approach to dealing with that. We know that God can deliver. However, I think the church should work more uh, in partnership 
with drug addiction programs like DARE and other uh, types of services that will provide critical information as it relates to prevention programs, intervention programs, and addiction programs, and have information available that will provide information individuals with contact information and we can have setups in these types of uh, faith-based organizations mm -hmm. to provide individuals with critical information that connect them to a resource where they can get the assistance that they need what are your thoughts on that um uh lady jacqueline I, I totally agree. I absolutely agree. I, I would go even a little further. I believe that each church, every local church should have a prevention program for drug, alcohol abuse, and even suicide, mm -hmm. even suicide, because I was shocked to find out, even though the rates are going down overall for most uh, ethnic group, for the black uh, community, our rates are still increasing. Our rates are still increasing with, with suicide. But I believe that this should be done inside our church, every church. I think that we should talk about it. I think that it should be out in the open. I think that we should be transparent uh, with our testimonies. If the Lord delivered you from, uh, from uh, alcohol, if, if the Lord delivered you from, uh, from drugs, you know, testify let people know you can assist someone you can help someone other than them sitting in silence and then we are really doing what we're supposed to do as the body of christ we are uh are tending encouraging and uplifting and tending to the body uh of the christ so i think that we should incorporate in every church every local church there should be a, a group that deals solely with or in or inclusive of whatever whatever else they're doing, drugs, mm -hmm. prevention, alcohol, and suicide. It's very important. It was very upsetting to see that uh, children, our black children, between the ages of something like eight and fifteen, it's like seventy four percent. I mean, I, I was I was flabbergasted. So uh, I agree wholeheartedly, and I think that that's the you know, bishop had been discussing this uh, as a program that we were looking into. But this is something that you know we openly talk about it at Nazareth. But I think it should be a, 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 an office mm -hmm. there, and definitely literature, and definitely uh, uh, professionals that we can send them to and mm -hmm. know that they will get the uh, the help that they need along with us praying for them, praying with them. And if I can just piggyback on what my wife said, and, and let me direct this to pastors and to youth leaders, even though we all fight uh, challenges in the area of finances, listen, brothers and sisters, you don't have to reinvent the wheel yourself. At my office, I, I have a Rolodex, I'm telling my age now, but I have a list of social services that whereas Nazareth Temple may not be able to finance all of these programs, but I can pick up the phone right. and call a licensed counselor and put them in touch mm -hmm. up in touch with somebody uh, that needs to be helped from drug addiction. Yes, I'll pray for them, I'll fast in the name of Jesus, but I also maintain that database where, you know, at the same time, Pastor, if you're unable to uh, have what it needs to have a food program where you give to the community, then have the resource where you can simply put that individual in touch with an agency that can help them. Mm -hmm. And we did that a few weeks ago when I was at the office. I received a phone call. Somebody had been struggling uh, in the area of alcohol addiction. I prayed for them and before I hung up, I said, listen, I want to put you in touch with somebody. So I put her in touch with an agency and she has been working so divinely. And you know what she did? I, I almost had to apologize. She called back and said, Pastor, your church is so wonderful. You have us in this a program that's getting us off alcohol. And, and then maybe I shouldn't, but I took credit for it. I said, yes, the Nazareth Temple Church of God in Christ 
We do those type of things. But the reality of the matter, <laughs> we did kind of do it because Pastor Smith put her in touch yes, with right. an agency that was able to help her naturally while she's attending our church and we're praying for her spiritually. Amen. That's it. Yes, ma'am. My question is, uh, all of this sounds good, okay? But let's say again, I don't have a church background, okay? Mm -hmm. People all over the country, you have Muslims, you have uh, Islamic individuals, you have Jewish individuals, you have atheists. You know, people don't all come to the table with the same cultural understanding background. People are diverse and they come from different walks of life. They all don't believe the same thing. They all mm -hmm. don't agree with a man, a man. And how do we get that population involved? How do we get that population to the table for the services that they need on prescription drugs? Uh, we were talking about suicide a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago. As we know, our African-American and Caucasian transgender youth are some of the greatest individuals that are at risk of suicide. So you can't talk about suicide and not talk about transgender youth. Can't talk about suicide and not speak in terms of the uh, LBGTQ community that are often at risk of taking their lives because of the isolation, the misunderstanding, and the lack of love that many of them feel when they come into the church because there's a lack of understanding and many oft, oftentimes a lack of compassion for those individuals. What are your thoughts on this? So, you know, I, and, and, and I hear you loud and clear and I get it, but I think it goes back to the church being an umbrella where anybody who wants to get out of the rain come under. I think the message, the message of the church should be that of love. Uh, we accept anybody, you know, granted there are certain lifestyles that the Bible teaches us against. And we, 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 we let people know that we love them. There may be aspects of their lives that we disagree with, but I think the number one thing that the church has to offer and, and may sound like it's a cliche or Somebody may be saying, I heard that before, is that the principles that are found in the Bible work. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Every week, God has blessed our church in St. Louis, where we're ministering on television two or three times a week. And I receive letters, you know, mm -hmm. I, I receive letters from, and that's why I'm saying it works. I receive letters from men and women that are incarcerated. They are recovering from drugs. Some of them, uh, you know, I have one brother write me a letter and said, I really don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. But the way that you lay God out in the Bible, I've changed my life. Amen. So, you know, when, when, when we minister from the word of God, I, I'm here to tell you because based upon those letters that come in, uh, the word of God works. So as long as we continue to teach the principles that are founded in the word of God and teach them what love, mm -hmm. you know, now, now I, if there's a church where, listen, I want homosexuality, homosexual to feel comfortable coming to Nazareth Temple. I'm not taking that back. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we, we often say that you have to change this and change that. Let me finish before you uh, hotline me or whatever you're going to do. But I believe if we could just get them to listen to the word yes, of God. Yes, yes. You know, I'm not telling you something that I heard. I have, you know, every so often I share the letters openly where people have written me. They were once to the point that they felt as if they didn't believe that there was God. But when they heard the gospel truth coming in love, mm -hmm. it has changed their lives. Amen. 
And you know, some, key. such were some of some of you, amen. Such were some of you. So we all came in to the church with something, and we are delivered from something. So I agree with my husband. So if we if we accept these people in with love mm -hmm. and, and we draw them with you know with our love and kindness, we be sweet to them. Hopefully, the Holy Spirit would do the rest. You know, we don't want to get them in, tell them that you have to do clean up and you have to stop doing this. You have to mm -hmm. do this before you can come to the to, to the body of Christ. Jesus just said, come. Mm -hmm. I think the church, I think I, I see churches in some ways similar, very similar to a business, a business that's able to handle complicated issues effectively will be more successful than a business that lacked the skill set to handle complicated issues. So if I have a business and we have a, a legal understanding of problems and we can reach across the aisle to uh, Caucasian people, black people, a diverse community and provide a product that gets results, that business is going to be more effective. Mm -hmm. It's the same way with the church. Me, uh, the church has to have the ability in, in the 21st century, okay, to reach beyond the surface problems and get to the root of problems to bring mm -hmm. forth an effectiveness outcome in the life mm -hmm. of the individual. And if the church cannot achieve that, that person is better off just staying at home and watching things online. Because if I'm coming, then I'm looking for an outcome. If you can't mm -hmm. deliver that outcome, then I can I can just search the internet and find what I like online to assist me. So we have to get higher, not right. only in our business techniques, but mm -hmm. we have to get higher in our spiritual outreach and techniques, techniques to help individuals, help them come up, to help them find the freedom that they need. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts? So let's take that out for a ride. I think that the church has a responsibility, but the thing that kind of gets me in a funny kind of way is that, you know, commonly I hear the responsibility of the church and I agree. The Lord Jesus gave us a great commission to go out. But then again, uh, attorney Sheila Stewart, uh, Lady Jacqueline, I think the individual has a responsibility too. Amen. I think the individual has a responsibility too. At some point, you have got to want the God of the Bible. At some point, as great and as mighty as almighty God is, you as an individual can put handcuffs on the power of God that will work in your life. Amen. So yes, the church has a responsibility uh, but then again, the individual, you have got to be willing to accept what the Bible says. So, you know, oftentimes it's, it's sort of like, not very often, but, you know, just the other day, I'll tell you a secret. And if you promise, don't tell anybody, I'll feel <laughs> more comfortable. Every so often, not too often, I may get a call or a text from a client and she or he may ball me out. Attorney Smith, you didn't do this. Attorney Smith, come on, Attorney Schiller. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. Attorney Smith, you didn't do this or you didn't do that. You didn't do that. And one day I just had to stop it. I said, wait a minute. I, you, you're telling me what I did not do. But when we opened up this case, I gave you a list of things that I was going to do as your lawyer. And then again, I, you, there was a list of things that you were supposed to do as a client. Bring me certain information. Give me the facts as they really happen. Tell the truth, <laughs> you know. So it's the same way when it comes to the church. The church has a responsibility to teach and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But then again, you know, there were even examples in the Bible when Jesus walked away from situation because the individuals or the people are because of their unbelief. Okay, I'm going to take that a little further. I remember uh, we were uh, out of town. It's kind of funny. We were out of town 
and some of my relatives were there and we, we met up at a restaurant and the uh, my relatives that were there, they they were from California. And uh, when they we went to a barbecue restaurant and I had never been there before. And when they came out to serve, we, we ordered our food. And when they came out, the food was on these uh, trash can tops. They weren't real trash cans, but they were on trash can tops. And uh, my cousin said, I am not eating that. That's mm -hmm. terrible. That looks horrible. I'm not eating anything off a truck. And I was laughing so hard that people didn't know whether I wanted my food or not. I was just so tickled. It wasn't a real trap, but it was the presentation. Mm -hmm. It was the presentation. That was the that was the nostalgia of the restaurant. But the presentation to my cousin was a complete was a complete turn off, and she said, "Send it back. I don't want it." What about the presentation? The, the responsibility of the presentation that comes mm -hmm. from the preacher. So if the individual, you're saying the individual have has a responsibility. Mm -hmm. But what about the presentation that comes in that causes the individual to say, you know what, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. I don't want this. What, what mm -hmm. are your thoughts on, on, on that? It goes back to what I said. It's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. it, it's a two-way street. As a preacher of the gospel, my job is to, number one, live the Bible that I preach from. Mm -hmm. Now, you never heard Bishop Smith, Pastor Smith, you never heard me say that I was perfect. Mm -hmm. I only preached that sermon once, and that's when I was trying to get Lady J to marry me, okay? <laughs> it worked. So I don't use that sermon anymore. So I realize that I'm not perfect. But I, as, a, as I said, the preacher, the minister, the evangelist, the missionary, Yes, you have a responsibility to live the life that you preach and teach about. Mm -hmm. So going back to the restaurant, you know, it, it, it goes back to the customer as well as the owner of the restaurant. I'm not I'm not saying that the church gets a free ride, but at the same time, I'm not saying that the unbeliever mm -hmm. or the individual that decides to leave the church get a free ride. Mm -hmm. Jesus said. You didn't see so you taking me to Sunday morning. Uh, okay. Jesus said, Upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. At the heat of the pandemic, a lot of times people make the mistake and say, COVID closed down the church, the coronavirus closed down the church. The devil is alive. Yeah, the church of the living God never closed. Mm -hmm. When businesses and corporations were closing, the church just adapted and went into Zoom, went yeah. more into social media. Some of us never closed our doors. Closed. We just reduced the number of people. And some people were shouting and praising God. So the church of God, the church, the Bible says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not. You've got to receive what does say the Lord. Now, it's my responsibility as a minister of the gospel, and it's also the responsibility of the church at large to present the God of the Bible in lifestyle, in words, and in deeds. But, you know, I, I can only go so far. Okay. It, it's just like, and then I'm going to give this one to Lady J., it's just like going back to when I practice law. I tell my clients their rights. And then at the end of the day, they make the decision for themselves. Okay, very good. Fair enough. Excellent response. Amen. Hey man, I will say, though, we, the church, when people come in, we have to be acceptance. We can't look at them in a certain type of way. Uh, we're going to get all kinds of people coming into the church looking and smelling and talking different from us. But as I said earlier, such were some of us, mm -hmm. right? So we were delivered, amen? So we can't uh, we can't make people feel unwelcome in, in, in God's house. We can't make people feel unwelcome. So we have to be willing to accept those people where they are, amen? That's what God did, accept them where they are and then preach the word. 
Don't tell them that they need to do this with their clothes. They need to stop doing this. They need to dress this way. They, they shouldn't be doing. Preach the word of God and let the Holy Spirit work. Wait, what, what are your thoughts as we're almost out of time, out of time, you all have done a great job, but let's wrap it up with some advice that you would give in terms of partnerships uh, with the community and partnerships uh, in business. What advice would you give in terms of a partnership, maybe uh, your business in a partnership with the community, business in partnership with the church, uh, and how that can relate to su some successful outcomes? I think when it comes to church and ministry, there are countless number of opportunity to partner especially with businesses, especially with the community. You know, for example, uh, we, we, we have the, the Nashville Temple Church is located in the midst of a business community. You know, go to the local McDonald's, for example, and ask them, will you be willing to donate X amount in terms of gift certificates? You know, one Sunday we, we had a program that whoever was the first one to church, we gave them a gift certificate uh, to McDonald's. Uh, we had a program where we partnership with the Quick Chip. Uh, they didn't give us the gift cards for free to buy the gas, but it was at a tremendously reduced rate. Uh, I bet somebody wish they had a Quick Trip car uh, right Amen. now Amen. With, the price, <laughs> with the price of gas. Uh, even and not just with businesses, with the local high school. You know, every so often I still get calls, not as much because of the pandemic, where the, the local sports team at the, in the school district, where the church is, the Rittner School District, they have a calendar that they put out every year, and the businesses are listed on a calendar, and we contributed financially to them. And in return of them, the partnership is they put the name of the Nazareth Temple Church of God in Christ uh, on the calendar that are going out to young people and to parents. So as pastors and as ministers, uh, we look for opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's a doctor that I work with uh, in my practice. Uh, you know, he doesn't want me to call his name and I will not call his name. But, you know, every Christmas he gives a monetary donation uh, from his uh, medical practice so that we can help provide food baskets and things of that nature. So there are countless number of opportunities for the church to partner with business and to partner with the school district and with community. The beautiful thing about that is that even though they won't let me put the Lord Jesus Christ per se, they will allow me to put Nazareth Temple Church of God in Christ loves you. Well, that you all have done a tremendous job and will you please find time to come back and be with us again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we would love to have you back. Thank you so much for all of your insight, the great information you have shared. We love having you on the show. You all are just so full of great information from, from business, from church, and from all of the corporate experiences that you have combined together. You have been tuned into Legal Views with Attorney Sheila R. Stewart. Please follow us on Facebook and on YouTube. And this show will be uploaded soon that you can watch it again on YouTube. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Attorney Bishop Melvin J. Smith. And thank you so much, Lady Jacqueline Smith. Have a great day and we will see you on next week. Thank you and have an awesome evening. Bye-bye.